Welcome back to Global Movie Recaps. Today we are going through a 1998 French comedy movie called The Dinner Game. This is a movie about how karma strikes when you least expect it. Spoilers ahead, watch out. Do like and subscribe. It will help us a great deal. We see a middle-aged man playing with his boomerang in the park. He gets a call. The voice on the other end asks if he is free that Wednesday for a dinner. The man playing with the boomerang says yes, but since he is distracted by the call, he is hit by the same boomerang he had catapulted a few seconds ago. In the next scene, we see a group of four friends in a pub. One of them asks the other if he is free for the game that Wednesday, and he responds that one of his rich clients at the bank has invited him for a dinner on Wednesday. The friends make fun of him and refer to him as an idiot, and the friend says that the client is very interested in his ideas, and that's why he has been invited to the dinner. The dinner they are referring to is the Dinner of the Fools, where a bunch of rich French elites each bring an idiot with them to impress their boss and social circle. The idiots are to discuss their unique passion and opinions during the dinner, which the elites make fun of. In the next scene, we see Pierre, one of the French elites. He works for a publishing house and his boss has invited him to the dinner again. He chats up with his friend, Cord at their local club. Pierre asks if Cord is making it for the dinner on Wednesday, to which Cord responds that it is his father's birthday on that day. Pierre says he doesn't have an idiot to take along with him, so he seeks Cord's help to find one. Cord while leaving packs his bag. Pierre finds interesting cutlery, to which Cord says that his dad collects them. Pierre makes a condescending remark and asks if his father is free on Wednesday for the dinner. Cord calls Pierre an asshole, and Pierre agrees that he is one. When Cord is traveling, he comes across Francois. Francois is an innocent and easygoing tax clerk at the Ministry of Finance. Francois has a hobby of building miniature monuments with matchsticks. Francois and Cord sit across each other on the train. Francois insists on showing his art collection, and as the train travels, he shows his entire collection while explaining the challenges involved in building them. Cord is visibly bored, but he doesn't speak out. They finally arrive at the station. Cord then calls Pierre and informs him of this news. He tells him that he has found a perfect idiot for his dinner. He suggests that Francois is a world champion idiot. The next day, Pierre's office calls Francois and informs him of the dinner. Francois is thrilled that someone is interested in his art, and he is enthusiastic to explain this to a crowd. Pierre invites Francois to his house to meet him before dinner. That day during a golf game, Pierre informs one of his friends about Francois and asks him if he has found an idiot for the dinner. The friend says he has found a boomerang collector who also happens to be a world-class idiot. During the game of golf, Pierre hurts his back and is unable to move properly. Karma's first strike. Back in his house, we see Pierre resting on the couch. His wife, Christine, gets him an ice pack and asks if he has canceled his dinner plans. Pierre says he will be all right by then and he has to attend the dinner so that he can impress his boss. Christine reprimands him for the same. She is not a fan of inviting innocent people and making fun of them. Meanwhile, Francois is getting ready to meet Pierre. Pierre tells his wife Christine that he has invited Francois to their house, but she gets angry and says she'll make a plan of her own. During this heated conversation, the doctor arrives to treat Pierre. Christine is still pissed at Pierre and mocks him in front of the doctor. She leaves the doctor alone with Pierre. Once Christine leaves, the doctor says they used to have something similar. They called it the dog dinner back in their college. They would invite ugly girls and the ugliest girl would get the prize. While the doctor treats Pierre, they converse about the dinner. How they source the idiots. How they go about the dinner. And other things. Once the doctor is done treating Pierre, he says that Pierre has to cancel the dinner as it looks like a serious muscle relapse and he might be out for three weeks. Hearing this news, Pierre wants to cancel his plans with Francois, but he is too late and Francois has already left. The doctor leaves and Francois arrives. Meanwhile, Pierre's friend calls him to ask why he is late. He informs him that he can't make it to the dinner. 
At the same time, we see the glimpse of the dinner party. We see the boomerang man explain his boomerang fetish fervently with great passion and all the elites condescendingly smirk. Pierre patronizingly breaks the ice with Francois. He gives a backhanded compliment about his work. Francois is all excited that a publisher like Pierre had invited him for a dinner. Francois hopes that he will get a publishing deal. Pierre says the book deal is not firm yet and Francois will have to wait. Pierre is just trying to play around with Francois to get him to stick with him till next week's idiot dinner with his boss. Francois meanwhile shows all of his work. He explains how long it took him to make each of these. Pierre asks if Francois is married, to which he responds that he was, but his wife left him for a friend of his at the ministry. Francois says the guy his wife ran away with is a good guy, but not very bright. Pierre is surprised to hear this. He wonders, how can someone be dumber than Francois? They share a laugh about the guy who Francois's wife ran away with. After their initial conversation, Pierre is so impressed with Francois's idiocy that he is determined to make it to the dinner. He asks Francois to help him from his couch to the car, but Francois trips and they both fall. Pierre's condition worsens. After a while, Pierre gets a message on his telephone. We hear Christine's voice. She says that she is sorry and will never return to the house. Pierre is heartbroken and asks Francois to leave. Being the innocent he is, Francois tries to console Pierre but to no avail. While arguing with Francois, Pierre falls and hurts his back again. Pierre asks Francois to call his doctor again. Francois dials a number written in the phone book, but he accidentally dials the number of a lady. He informs her of Pierre's condition, but realizes he has called the wrong number. The lady at the other end asks for more details. She lies that she is Pierre's sister. Francois shares additional detail about his wife leaving him and how broken Pierre is. After he cuts the phone, they both realize it is Marlene. Marlene is Pierre's mistress. Pierre tells him how big of a trouble Marlene is and calls her to ask her not to come around. Pierre is afraid that his wife might find out and that would add fuel to the flame. Francois calls Marlene again and tells her that Pierre's wife is back and asks her not to come around. Francois starts talking with Marlene and reveals that he can't leave Pierre alone. Marlene catches the lie that Pierre's wife is not back. She says she'll be there no matter what. Pierre calls her again and asks her not to come, as his wife might come back. Marlene responds that his wife might not return, as she might be with another man, LeBlanc. She cuts the call. Pierre asks Francois to leave and get the hell out, when Francois responds that he didn't tell him the same when Pierre asked about his personal life. Pierre responds that his wife was married to a friend, LeBlanc, and he stole her from him. He tells him that his wife's ex-husband, LeBlanc, had come to him to get a novel published, but instead, Pierre stole both the wife and credits to the novel. Francois asks Pierre to call his friend LeBlanc to ask him if his wife has come to his place. Pierre dismissed the idea, but he asks him for a favor. Pierre asks if Francois can pretend to be a movie producer and call LeBlanc to check and see if Christine is with him. Pierre doubts if Francois can pull it off since he is not so bright. Francois dismisses this and goes ahead. He calls LeBlanc and talks about the movie rights. LeBlanc asks him if this is a prank call, but Francois manages to convince him that he is from a serious film production company. He gets LeBlanc to discuss the movie rights, but cuts the call without talking about Pierre's wife. Francois suggests he will call him again. He calls him again, but when LeBlanc asks for his number, Francois ends up giving the telephone number of Pierre. LeBlanc realizes that it is Pierre's number. LeBlanc calls back and says Pierre should ask his wife's whereabouts himself and not pretend to be a movie producer. Pierre asks if he has seen his wife. LeBlanc replies that he has waited two years for this moment to see Pierre in this state. LeBlanc, however, says that he is willing to drop by to help Pierre ease the pain. Pierre says that he doesn't deserve a friend like LeBlanc. Pierre, anticipating Marlene's arrival, writes a note asking her to leave him alone and hands it to Francois to give it to her when she arrives. Francois then helps Pierre to his bed. Francois then heads out and meets Christine, Pierre's wife. 
He assumes that this is the mistress, Marlene, and says that he should not visit her. He exaggerates certain things, making Christine all the more furious. She leaves again. Later, Francois brags to Pierre as to how he sent Marlene away. Pierre is surprised that Francois managed to do it so quickly. After a while, LeBlanc arrives at the home. He tells her that Christine had called him and told him about the two choices that she has. One to return home back to Pierre and the other to go to the house of a Playboy ad man. The Playboy ad man has a love nest where he has parties, but not many are aware of the location. Francois, who is about to leave, overhears this conversation and says that he knows the location of that house because of a tax audit he had some time ago. Pierre calls him back and asks for a favor again. Francois says that he would have to call his football addict friend, Cheval, to figure this out. He says they will have to wait till halftime break of the football match before they make the call. It is the biggest football match in France, Paris versus Marseille. Meanwhile, when Francois is busy watching the football match, LeBlanc realizes that Francois is the idiot that Pierre has invited for the dinner. He laughs at the irony. Broken spine and broken heart at the hands of an idiot. LeBlanc makes fun of Pierre. While Francois is busy watching the match, the doorbell rings and the real Marlene arrives. Pierre asks Francois, who he sent out a while ago, he asks him if that was a blonde in a beige coat. Francois is confused. Pierre is pissed. Francois realizes that he had pushed Christine, Pierre's wife, out of the house and not Marlene. Francois says that he thought she was the trouble that Pierre has mentioned. LeBlanc can't hold his laugh in the background. Pierre and LeBlanc manage to send Marlene out for a while. Francois says he will talk to Cheval. He asks him for the ad man's address. Cheval says that the ad man is a huge playboy pig and pities with Pierre because his wife might be there. Cheval agrees to drop by the office and get the address for Francois. As they cut the call, Pierre realizes that it is dangerous to let a tax man inside the house without having declared certain assets. They move all the undeclared paintings and other expensive things inside a room to hide them from Cheval. Meanwhile, Cheval gets the files on the ad man from the office and drives towards Pierre's house. At the other end, Pierre, LeBlanc, and Francois clear the entire house and even mix his expensive wine with vinegar to make it taste like cheap wine. Cheval enters, greets Francois, and they banter around about football. Cheval then says that he had been to a similar house on an audit and the owner ended up in prison because he didn't declare his taxes properly. Cheval notices all the paintings removed and jokes about it. He finally gives them the address from the file. Pierre and LeBlanc discuss if they should go and give the ad man a visit, but they decide not to. They instead decide to call him, but the ad man knows the voices of Pierre, LeBlanc, and Cheval since he audited him. The only option left is Francois. Pierre is against this idea since he fears Francois might ruin this. LeBlanc convinces Pierre that he will train Francois for the call. They pretend to call on behalf of one of the ad man's friends. Pierre suggests that Francois should threaten the ad man over the call. Francois gets it all right and calls the ad man. Over the call, they realize that Pierre's wife is not there at the ad man's house, but the ad man is sleeping with Cheval's wife to screw him over the tax audit. So they hand over the phone to Cheval. Cheval calls the ad man and threatens him with a tax raid and imprisonment. He asks his wife to get dressed and return to the house ASAP. Cheval being all depressed gulps the coarse wine. J.E. feels like puking and heads to the toilet, but comes across the room where LeBlanc and Pierre have hidden all the paintings. Cheval leaves the house abruptly and says that they'll meet again because he has to audit the house. We see Christine, Pierre's wife, meet with an accident. Pierre is informed of this from the hospital and rushes to meet her. Meanwhile, he gets a call from Marlene, who leaves a message over the telephone. She says she will do something stupid if Pierre doesn't pick up the call. Francois, who is overhearing this, picks up the phone and informs her of Pierre's wife. Marlene says Pierre deserves this for being an asshole. 
She tells Francois that Pierre invites people for dinner and makes fun of them. She says he would have done it that day as well, but for his back injury. She explains the whole concept of idiot dinner to him. Francois realizes that he is the idiot that Pierre had invited. He cuts the call. Francois starts questioning Pierre, who the dinner was for, and how the guests are selected, and he confronts Pierre if he was the idiot for that week. Pierre, meanwhile, gets a call from the hospital. It is his wife. She asks him not to come to visit him and cuts the call. Pierre mocks Francois for a while. Pierre also says that Francois destroyed his life to avenge all the idiots that have been mocked. Francois, out of pity towards Pierre, calls his wife and lies to her that he is in a phone booth. He manages to convince her to get back with her husband. He also explains the state he is in and all that he has had to endure. Pierre is impressed by this. He is finally grateful to Francois. An emotional Pierre tells Francois that he is the true idiot. Pierre tells that he will be Francois's idiot at the next dinner. The phone rings again and Francois answers the call. It is Pierre's wife and she realizes that Francois was lying as well. Pierre regrets calling Francois to the dinner. Karma strikes her final blow. The movie cuts to dark.